Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the Freudian book tag. So this has got 10 questions. I'm afraid I can't remember who created it or who tagged me. I'll try to find that out and put it below. I have some books here. Thumbnail sorted. And uh, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. So these are pretty long questions, so bear with me while I read them out. Okay. Question one. Freud's theories are commonly mischaracterized and underappreciated. Name a character in a book that you feel is misunderstood. In what ways? So, for me, I'm going for Maxim de Winter from Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. So, I mean, I know he's not a very nice person, but I feel like he has reasons for not being very nice, you know? He's, you know, well, I mean, I'm not going to make apologies for his actions or whatever, but... You know, I, I feel like that's often overlooked and he's seen as just as a total villain when he's kind of a reluctant villain, I think. Question number two. When Freud first debuted his psychoanalytic theory, it was not well received. Many were scandalized by his discovery of children's sexuality. It was only later that his work was recognized and applauded. What is a book whose debut was not well received or a book whose release was considered by some to be scandalous? What were your thoughts? So for me, I've gone for Howl and Other Poems by Allen Ginsberg. So it says here, even on the back, uh, it was originally published by City Lights Books in the fall of 1956, subsequently seized by US Customs and the San Francisco Police. It was the subject of a long court trial at which a series of poets and professors persuaded the court that the book was not obscene. So there we go. It's, I mean, it's not that obscene. Number three, question number three. Freud is said to have been very self-aware and self-analyzing even in childhood. What is a book that seems to have been quite aware of itself? What kind of reading experience did this make for you? So for me, I have gone for Song of Susanna by Stephen King, or specifically any of the Dark Tower books, in which King himself is a character in it. You have to be quite aware of yourself, I think, to do that. I mean, I personally, it's something that I'd avoid writing because I think it would be very easy to do it badly, but King pulls it off, you know? But it made for an interesting experience, an unusual one. Question number four. While many aspects of Freud's theories are still used, he was very much a product of his time. For instance, in his early career, he was influenced by Darwinism and in later years by the discoveries made by physicists. Being a neurologist, most of his early discoveries were influenced by medicine and biology. Name a book that was strongly influenced by prominent ideas of the time, but that have remained relevant over time. Why do you think it's maintained its relevance? So for me, I've gone for The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And I just think, you know, when it was written during the 80s, a lot of this is actually based on stuff that's happened around the world in various places as well. But when it was originally written, you know, we're kind of almost into this, I don't know, a new wave of feminism, you know, past the initial wave of feminism, past the 60s, and then like through the 70s into the 80s. Um, and, and I think that's just, the ideas in this are still relevant just when you look at, Trump basically you know question number five the unconscious Freud was the first to suggest that all behavior is the result of hidden mental states or as he called it the unconscious name a book that in your opinion shows the real side of humanity or a character so for this I've gone for all quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remarque I like the fact this book I believe was banned in Poland for being pro-German and in Germany for being pro-Polish so that kind of tells you what kind of war story this is and it is, it's just a very human story about the very human people who died for... Question number six, instincts. One of the basic premises of psychoanalysis is that human mind and behavior are influenced by unconscious drives, libido and aggression, sexual love versus destruction slash death. What is a book that deals with these primal forces? So I will say The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman actually deals with both of those. It deals with love and sort of sexuality in terms of uh, well, I don't want to share too many spoilers, but the, the, one of the characters has like a sexual awakening uh, And it's really interesting actually how it ties back to the idea of dust because dust is effectively original sin You just have to read these books um, But it also deals with death. It actually deals with the death of death and uh, You know the death of uh, God as well. Basically, you just got to read these you got to read them question number seven Hysteria and repression. At the turn of the century, Freud claimed that people were so sexually repressed that they started to develop physiological symptoms such as blindness, numbness, hysterical attacks, when in fact nothing was physically wrong with them. Name a book that features repressed sexuality. Sorry, I couldn't read that because I was blind, numb, and having a, a hysterical attack. Uh, repressed sexuality. Uh, Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. I mean, need I, need I say more? Question number eight. Dreams. In his groundbreak... the told you repressed sexuality 
Dreams. In his groundbreaking interpretation of dreams, Freud discovered that dream analysis is one of the best ways to understand the unconscious. This practice is still one of the key skills that modern psychoanalysts today have to learn how to master. Name a book where dreams are heavily prominent. So here I have gone for Earth is Room Enough by Isaac Asimov. Specifically, this is a collection of short stories, and the last one is called uh, Dreaming is a Private Thing. And in that story, you basically have professional dreamers who have dreams that you can then purchase so that you have that dream, you know? And it actually inspired a piece of music by a guy called Mill Holt, uh, Bill Holt called Dreamies, which uh, I definitely would, would recommend checking out. Question number nine, the couch. Of course, how could we forget the couch? Lying down to talk about anything at all while a stranger sits behind you is a weird dynamic, however fascinating and effective. There is something unique and special about the analyst-patient relationship, something you can only know if you've experienced it. Name a book with interesting, weird, and or unique relationships. So here I've gone for Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstainer, and that's because it's basically the relationship between a mother and a daughter, but it's a very strained relationship, you know? Uh, there's not much love there, and it's all set during the backdrop of um, Soviet occupation in Latvia. Question number 10. Freud has been seriously misunderstood by many since his day. Be that as it may, modern research has supported many of his findings. Today, psychoanalysis is a strong field, with more and more people training to become analysts. Name a book slash author that makes you feel hopeful about the future. So for this, despite kind of how it goes, you know, I've gone for The Martian by Andy Weir because I think living on Mars is our hope for the future, basically. We're kind of leaving it a bit late for this planet, for this earthly realm. But, um, yeah. Andy Weir, The Martian. I mean, it does make me feel hopeful. I mean, it's just made me feel kind of sad at the same time. But we'll be fine. We'll go and live on Mars. All right. So now I'm going to tag a few people. So I'm going to go on to my videos and see who has recently commented. Okay, I'm going to tag Alex Black, Emma Rosen Books, Todd the Librarian, Anthony Andrews, because he's back, uh, Hooked on Books, and Hannah Tay. That'll do. All right. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. This was my take on the Freudian book tag. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.